ओके वी कैन नॉट हियर यू लक्ष्मण लक्ष्मण निगला वॉइस ब्रेक का लक्ष्मण नि वीटल नैटवर्क स्थल वीडियो Lakshmanan, we can start now. Good to be here. Looking forward to the discussion. Thank you, thank you for joining us, Mazhar Bhai. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Lakshman, our internet is not friendly with you today. Maybe with the phone, you need to go out of home. Anyway, I, I think Abuka, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> I can hear you. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, let us start. Okay. Okay, that I will. Okay, no problem. You got a network okay, Ani Boy, Lishman. Can you try to speak, Lishman, and now? Hello, Dayanan. How are you? Fine, Sudhir. Thank you. You're welcome. Very cold, eh, in Delhi? Yes. At this moment, it should be around seven degrees. So. Okay. Night, uh, it will uh, it will touch uh, zero. No. Two. Two. Okay. What is the problem with the Lishman? Uh, I think his you signal. Can... His signal is bad. Yeah. So. So maybe Abu, you can do his part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let us begin. Uh, I think so. So, my dear friends, uh, we are becoming late. Uh, we are waiting for the Lishman, uh, who is organizing, who is the part of this uh, organizing team. But we have some problem, network problem. So, I am taking up the responsibility on my own. I am sorry for that. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll be very uh, late. So. I welcome you all, uh, dear friends, uh, who are the parts of the humanist movement worldwide. And today, uh, we are we are we are joining with uh, Mr. Sudhir, who is uh, uh, who is working day and night uh, for the growth of the humanist movement worldwide, and who has uh, dedicated his life in such a way that he is. Uh, uh, all dreams about this in this moment, and we are very happy about that. And today, uh, uh, our program is in the context of uh, Sila's birthday, and uh, our uh, topic is uh, Sila's messages, uh, proposals uh, as universal humanism uh, for a better world. And our beloved guest, I uh, welcome uh, Mr. Sudhir uh, for coming forward to deliver a speech on this topic, which is a very relevant topic in this modern world. And also, I'm welcoming all members who are eagerly waiting for this uh, talk to listen, understand, and implement in their life. 
welcome sudhir and all friends once again so let us start i think and i am inviting mr lakshman to coordinate uh, this program thank you thank you abu for your very kind words i don't know if i deserve all of them so thank you very much uh, friends uh, i am going to talk from a written uh, talk so as to be coherent and to the point and the heading is proposals of silos universal humanism for a better world let us look at the 1960s and the crisis in the world the 60s were one of the most tumultuous and divisive decades in the world history the era was marked by the civil rights movement the vietnam war the anti war protests political assassinations and the emerging generation gap there was the cuban missile crisis the cultural revolution in china students and workers uprisings in france in the us and the other western countries the 60s is noted for its counter culture <clears throat> there was a revolution in social norms including clothing music drugs dress sexuality formalities civil rights percepts of military duty and schooling some denounce the decade as one of the irresponsible excess flamboyance the decay of social order and the fall or relaxation of social taboos in the face of all this silo was building his initial contacts and the groups around them clarifying the doctrine of universal human nation as his response to the global crisis <clears throat> on the 4th of may 1969 he spoke in public for the first time at a remote and this hilly place called punta di vacas in english it can be understood as a point of the cows where cows were taken for grazing he had to go there because he was not allowed to speak in the capital city due to dictatorship in argentina which told him to go and speak to the stones this is marked as the formal launch of what became the humanist movement there explaining the difference between pain and suffering he said and i quote the great enemies of humanity fear of sickness fear of poverty fear of death fear of loneliness all these forms of suffering pertain to your mind and all of them reveal your inner violence the violence that is in your mind notice how that violence always stems from desire the more violent a person is the more gross are that person's desires quote ends through the story of a horse rider he said see and i quote see how desire can trap you but notice that there are desires of different qualities there are cruder desires and there are more elevated desires elevate desire purify desire surpass desire in doing so surely you will have to sacrifice the wheel of pleasure but you will also become free of the wheel of suffering spurred by desire the violence in a person does not simply remain like a sickness in the consciousness of that person it acts in the world of other people and is exercised upon them and do not think that when i talk of violence i am speaking only about the armed act of war where some men destroy others that is only one form of physical violence quote ends he goes on to explain other forms of violence as <clears throat> economic violence racial violence religious violence moral violence and the wish to impose your way of life upon another as another form of external violence he proposed as a solution only in a faith and in a meditation can end the violence in you 
in others and in the world around you. All the other doors are false and do not lead away from this violence. This world is on the verge of exploding with no way to end the violence. Do not choose false doors. There are no politics that can solve this mad urge for violence. There is no political party or movement on the planet that can end the violence. Do not choose false doors that promise to lead away from the violence in the world. I have heard that all over the world, young people are turning to false doors to try to escape the violence and inner suffering. They turn to drugs as a solution. Do not choose false door to end the violence. My brother, my sister, keep these simple commandments as simple as these rocks, this snow and this sun that bless us. Carry peace within you and carry it to others. Quote ends. The Argentine government immediately imposed a 12 years ban on his speaking publicly. The quiet and non-disturbing retreats to develop the works in remote locations and forests were closed abruptly by the army. This led to the decision to spread to other continents. And by the time he spoke again publicly in 1981, the groups of volunteers based on his doctrine had spread to 42 countries. These volunteers, then known as the Community for Human Development, invited him to many countries for public speeches. On 1st November 1981, at Chopati Beach, Bombay, India, he spoke to a crowd of over 10,000 people who gathered there in spite of the heavy cyclonic winds and warning to people not to venture to sea. People heard him speak in Spanish, simultaneously translated to English and Hindi, in pin drop silence. There was a social and cultural group. This was a social and cultural group, which with the passing of the years would come to be recognized by the United Nations. During those years, more precise doctrinary parameters were defined and the characteristics of this new type of movement were established so that it could no longer be confused with the spontaneous kinds of groups that had already entered a situation of decline and disintegration. Starting with the Community for Human Development, whose logo is a triangle and is within a circle, a wide range of cultural clubs, neighborhood associations, and base organizations begin to appear. In this way, the humanist movement gradually took shape until today it continues to spread through numerous expressions ranging from literary literacy campaigns in the Caribbean and Africa to public health initiatives in which doctors, paramedics, and volunteers work under serious limitation, but with great spirit in various parts of the world. The humanist movement, which is so diversified in its social and cultural activities, has also given rise to political parties, which began to form in the 80s. By the 90s, this movement had attained full conceptual maturity, defining itself as universalist humanism or new humanism and differentiating itself clearly from the old humanisms with which it has neither organic nor ideological relationships. To complete the picture, we can say that what ultimately defines the movement is not a certain political action or social action or cultural activity. It is a set of ideas and a style of behavior. In the simplest form, we can express the most general proposals of this movement by saying that first, it advocates placing the human being as the central value and concern with nothing above the human being and no human being above another. Secondly, this movement affirms the equality of all people and therefore works to go beyond the mere formality of equal rights before the law to advance towards a world in which there is true equality of opportunity for all. Thirdly, it recognizes personal and cultural diversity and therefore affirms the characteristics of all people and cultures, condemning all discrimination 
based on economic, racial, ethnic, and cultural differences. Fourth, it encourages any tendency that develops knowledge beyond the limitations imposed on thought by prejudices accepted as absolute and immutable truths. Fifth, it affirms the freedom of ideas and beliefs. And finally, it rejects all forms of violence, understanding that physical violence is not the only such expression, but that in addition, economic violence, racial violence, religious violence, as, as well as the moral and psychological violence and daily practices which have our daily practices which have become deeply entrenched in every religion region of the planet. These proposals, considering the human being as the central value, affirming equality of opportunity for all, recognizing diversity and opposing all discrimination, promoting freedom of thought, and struggling against violence in all its forms, characterize our thought and our action in their most general aspects. At the same time, these proposals come to configure a style of life and a way of relating to others, embodying the highest of moral values, which can be expressed in this way, treat others as you would have them treat you. Finally, we must point out that in order to carry forward the above proposals, a hallmark of our behavior is participation in all fields of human endeavor. For our movement, beyond being a recommendation, the act of participating in cultural, social, and political arenas with the greatest energy and tenacity of which we are capable becomes a vital need in these critical times we are living through. The argument that everything is in the hands of an infinitely powerful and violent system, that success belongs to the corrupt and the incompetent, instead of being grounds for acceptance of our condition as subjugated and humiliated beings, must be transformed into a fundamental stimulus of change, the state of affair, the state of public affairs. At the same time, we also place emphasis on the dimension of the strictly personal and interpersonal, which though inscribed within a social context, constitute the nucleus of our existence. Personal relationships, which today have deteriorated to such an extreme degree, reveal the growth of a callous violence in which the importance of you and the solidarity of we are fast disappearing and from which the individual thrown into isolation and dizzying confusion no longer finds any way out. We must reaffirm in this field that all human beings have the right to ask themselves about the meaning of life, about love, about friendship, about all those things that make up the poetry and the greatness of human existence and which that stupid and smallest materialistic culture attempts to denigrate, dragging everything towards anti-values and disintegration. And in this situation that we are living in, we recognize the provisional triumph of culture of anti-humanism. But the triumphant of today cannot be assured of their victory in the future because a new spirituality is beginning to express itself all over the world. This spirituality is not the spirituality of superstition. It is not the super spirituality of intolerance. It is not the spirituality of dogma. It is not the spirituality of religious violence. It is not the ponderous spirituality of ancient tablets or worn out values. It is a spirituality that has awakened from its profound sleep to once again nourish human beings in their best aspirations. Amidst all this global crisis, we must also announce a new civilization that is being born 
the first planetary civilization in the human history the first planetary civilization in the human history and therefore the crisis that now beset us and are still to come in the near future will serve despite their misfortunes to surpass this final stage of human prehistory and each person will know whether or not they decide to accompany this change and each person will comprehend whether or not they seek a profound renewal in their own life with all this silo developed a coherent response to the crisis and also a practical method to grow internally as a meaningful human being discovering and experiencing non violence within thus taking oneself on the path of transformation while participating in the groupal activities of helping others do the same thus transforming that much of the society this when done globally though in small groups in different streets neighborhoods and villages becomes a huge global action and all of this through non violence thus truly becoming an active non violence or non violence in action as gandhi ji would have done i quote silo two great souls who struggled against discrimination and injustice accompany our gatherings inspirational guides of non violence mahatma gandhi and martin luther king who both knew failure but never slackened in their intent today they are very much present in our minds and in our hearts for the solution to the crisis i quote silo something needs to be done is what you hear everywhere very well then i will tell you what must be done but nothing will come of it because no one will listen i said that at the international level all who are invading territories of others should withdraw immediately and comply with the resolutions and recommendations of the united nations i say that at the internal level of each nation an effort must be made to make law and justice function as imperfect as they may be before making laws tougher and enacting repressive measures that play into the very hands of those who now obstruct law and justice i say that at the domestic level people should practice what they preach and leave behind the hypocritical rhetoric that poisons the new generations i say that at the personal level each person should strive to make their thoughts coincide with their feelings and their actions shaping a coherent life and thus escaping from the contradiction that generates violence but nothing of what is said will be listened to nonetheless events themselves will succeed in making the invaders retreat will cause the tough guys to be repudiated by the people who will demand the simple observance of the law will result in children rejecting the hypocrisy of their parents and cause each person to reproach the contradiction that they generate in themselves and those around them the quote ends according to what he developed that is according to what silo developed we live in an environment and we need to start from this environment because this is where our reach is and this is where we can do things this is where we can bring in new values and new perspectives and this is the important thing even when it is a very difficult one or an impossible environment and then as we get together and we work more we can then make larger contributions for example the larger contributions have taken place in places of larger groups of ours like for example chile where humanists are today part of the government bolivia where humanists were in the team to create the new constitution 
Russia, where Silo was invited to share the ways out of the crisis, etc. So the reason why we want to be able to get groups and larger groups, we want to spread this message is that this then becomes the response that we want to give to the world in our world with our values and with our things. We want to give this response because we are living in a particular system. We don't want to dismantle the entire system. We need to modify the system. We don't want to dismantle it totally. We take what is good if there is any good and we modify the rest of it, which is not good. So that is the point. That is why it is so valid in today's terms because there is a crisis. This is always a response to the crisis and there has always been a crisis and it is a growing crisis. But in our response to the crisis, we employ the methodology of active nonviolence and non-discrimination, the two ingredients in building a new type of society. We feel that there will be a time when the human being will need to have new values, a new perspective, understanding and connectedness. So what happens is that we are preparing ourselves for that because when there is a general crisis that affects society and our lives we are the ones who have to give direction to our lives that direction is the most important thing so here in the movement we learn this direction we learn meaning of life and coherence and from there we get the values of human history what the human attitude is amongst other things. When we grow in numbers and expand into groups, then what is the idea? So as an example, I just take this that we see that people are of different cultures, of different values, of different languages, and they feel isolated sometimes. There is a discord between groups and that, and things of that nature. Now, according to the percept, good is what unites people and bad is what divides them. In the above example, where people feel discriminated and isolated, bad is what divides them. To offer a cultural response to this type of crisis that people feel in their lives and more, the organism convergence of culture offers recourse to a dignified way of living where commonalities are accepted and differences are respected. So everything links to the roots. So these six different organisms aspect each other in the sense of the political response, the social response, the cultural response, etc. You choose the type of response that you want to give in front of a crisis, in front of a failing society, in front of these things, you want to give a response to. And you want like-minded people with you who are also working in this direction. So it gives a link to your life as well. It is very important to have that in the sense it offers an impetus to your life. Taking a housing society, diverse groups, diverse people in a large housing society group. Now, how do you get people together? How do you see the housing laws which are there? But then they also come into things like maintenance and repairs and things like that. So how do you organize this? Somebody has to come forward to do this, right? And somebody has to get the initiative and have larger people joining them then we can run a very good society. So the same thing is explained, is expanded into village level, into what you call the district level or whatever it is. So eventually it will be down to this level, the neighborhood level. It will always be down to the neighborhood level, that which is manageable. What happens is that when they work at the little higher level, 
we want to have people engaged in these things so wherever you are you start taking these values wherever you are in whichever group you are in whichever block you are wherever you are you start disseminating these values and that's where that's what we are doing with our friends and our people by that way people understand the global that we are talking about this is not a big thing because we have to just work for ourselves here and then have other groups committed elsewhere and that's it so everything gets connected so these are the six responses that were given the cultural response the social response the political response etc and they are the tools with which through peaceful efforts of non violence and non discriminatory action we humanize the earth all these different organisms which have been formed although they work separately in their respective fields of activity these are responses to the crisis of society as a whole they are components of the same wave with the same humanistic approach but focusing on their particular field of interest thank you friends for your patience obviously there is a lot to share and we can go on and on for hours and days but let us pause here for a session of questions and answers thank you very much Yeah, friends. Uh, we can ask uh, questions. So there, and more will answer your questions. Okay, please. Eva Brunner has raised her hands. Eva, please. Okay, maybe that was a mistake. anybody else would like to ask a question or would like to contribute a point is welcome thank you for give me this chance i am, uh, I am mansoor hasan i am a practicing doctor in kerala and uh, i am running an institute where we are now looking after about 170 destitute orphans widows and mentally and mentally challenged people okay i am interested of course in bringing about changes worldwide as you said and so uh, but i am wondering what are the practical ways of reaching out to people because we don't have infinite time with us we don't we have very limited time and in different parts of the world people are oppressed enslaved misery a lot of uh, all of us know that so we should have a time frame by which we can uh, develop we can achieve things like uh, stages of development and what should be what should be the stages of development to implement whatever you said you have said a lot of things which uh, almost all of us are aware of these things so how about how, what about uh, or how we are going to bring about changes in the world without knowing that's my first question what are the stages of development and are we succeeding that means what are the parameters to be checked whether we are in this progressing whether we are progressing at a pace required to change the world because that's very important as i told we don't have infinite time my first concern so that's my first question stages of development my another concern is that why the world became like this deeply divided fearful uh people are enslaved all over the world why 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 this happened without knowing the root cause which have subjected people to these miseries for the last century without knowing the root causes how can we uh, develop solution so my idea is that we are for uh, not for centuries we have been 
under the rule of multinational corporates. For example, the 1600 AD. Mr. Mansoor, uh, can to, I request you yeah, to yeah, can yeah, I request yeah, you to yeah. uh, have yeah. your clear questions instead of a long talk because then we okay. don't know what All to right. answer. So I understand. So it's the stages point, of development. Taking your first stages of development para. Yeah. yeah. Stages as of I development said, parameters was, to be checked. Yeah, as I was uh, saying, and I was quoting Silo, that when we work in one neighborhood, we can think like this, that I'm working in one neighborhood with maybe 200 people, but the world is seven and a half billion people. How will the world change? What we are saying is that if people like this work in every neighborhood of the world, things can get, and things are connected, with the same doctrine, with the same ideology, with the same methodology, then we are talking of a global change. Essentially, we are talking of volunteers who will do things as you are doing in your part on your own initiative and connecting all these volunteers together through the same ideology of nonviolence and non-discrimination. <clears throat> Let me not repeat the detailed points again, as we said, the five points that we don't discriminate, we take all people together and all that. So when, when we connect these things together, few people, but in thousands and thousands and millions of neighborhoods, that is where the global change becomes easier to see. This is the first part. The second is that we connect all of them with a very coherent ideology, which is based on nonviolence and non-discrimination. We can have another session to explain the ideology because it would take at least half an hour to explain in details. But then when the coherent ideology is connecting all these thousands and hundreds of thousands of groups, then you see a different kind of map of a changing world appearing. So I hope that uh, answers the, the question. Regarding, regarding the history of violence, well, I think it requires a, a much longer meeting. But yes, as we explained in the beginning of the talks, taking 60s as the example, which has been condemned as the most irresponsible, as a decade of most uh, irresponsible excesses. And as we said in the talk, that when we have uh, negative desires, we have violence. So Silo is talking of elevating the desires. And Silo has developed and given a very practical ways of not just doing the social work with the others, but also personal work with ourselves. How do we change ourselves? He's talking of how do we develop that love, that friendship, that oneness, that humanness within us and around us? And how do we connect with each other as human beings? How do we search for the meaning of life? How do we experience it? So all that then transforms us individually because... For example, you are working today with some 300 people. But there's another example of somebody who's killing 300 people. It's the same human being. The human being is human being. But it is what is in the human being inside, which is expressing outside, is the issue. So we have to learn to change that inside and hence have a more better and a positive expression outside. Can I compare this to a uh, real life situation can we can we have can we have some other questions in the meanwhile first please if you don't mind and then yeah. you come back again no. yeah yeah please. yeah please thank you mm. Yes, friends. If there is no other question, then Mansoor can continue with his questions. Okay, I am putting forward a real life situation to compare whatever you have, you have said. Or, or, uh, that is, you suppose an individual, for example, myself, and I am interacting with the society. Suppose myself is a very excellent person, very strong man, very uh, dedicated, but uncorrupt. But what about the society, a deeply corrupt, uh, killing others and enslaving 
the people what will be the outcome now the reverse you think of the reverse the individual and myself is a very corrupt and very cruel person but the society is excellent and if i fall the society will support my question is as you said as mahatma gandhi said as silos message said transform the self but at the same time if the society is deeply corrupted what can we do for them so we are working <laughs> on a simultaneous transformation of the self and the society so we have this uh, six responses which have been developed the political response the social response the cultural response and uh, and the peace response the spiritual response and the study response uh, these work in a more organized way in their areas specific areas so for example convergence of culture which has organized this event of today works in specifically in the environmental issues but today we are not talking of environmental issue here we are talking of more deeper than that so while convergence of culture or does the activities in environment issue it also does some deeper things from time to time and on a side so we are always doing two kinds of activities as we can see one is for the personal development and one is for the social change both at the same time and that is where that is how we intend to solve this this riddle that you are placing before us okay my uh, my main concern is that the society is controlled by multinational corporates for example they create fear they create division and they manipulate for example in 1919 one 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 simple example uh, billboards were put up across uh, uh, united states of america showing that ladies are enjoying with the smoking and the caption was ladies do you don't you want uh, freedom that means the freedom for ladies means they have to smoke it was put up by the tobacco industry so the whole world is manipulated by the multinational corporations and they have enslaved uh, what what will be the effect if we are trying to uh, improve ourselves for a self improvement without taking care of this root causes of current problem multinational corporate Mahatma Gandhi gave a solution to this problem which we intend to take forward for example if people are educated and they and, and this is what we need to do and they understand that this is propaganda then they have to just reject the multinational they have to just boycott and that's it the multinational would be finished in one day if you remember a recent example of a sportsman i am forgetting his name who was doing a press conference and on his table they kept pepsi or was coca cola he put coca cola bottles down below the table and put water on top and in one day coca cola lost some 10% of the share market so the multinationals are not very brave they can be broken very easily is a question of bringing the intent of the people forward strongly is a question of raising enough faith within ourselves and we becoming a group having that faith uh abu wants to say something by the way if yeah, anybody I, else wants to answer a question is most welcome because i am not the guru here huh? it's just that i was giving the talk today yes abu yeah okay so the you said now uh, it was very logic uh, what you said about the development the practical uh, steps of the uh, our movement like uh, we will begin from neighborhood and uh, millions of neighborhood uh, small units uh, worldwide will make a drastic change uh, at the mil uh, million level like that it is logically correct but my question is uh, it is 61 years now passing uh, when silo came to this world with this message what about the growth of this movement and uh, how many such uh, small units we could make Uh, in the world wide and uh, how far we could reach to the society through such small units in this uh, uh, long time span of 61 years 61 years no, it's not a short time yes um first of all we have to understand the perspective that we are talking of volunteers who don't take money from anybody who depend on their personal resources and with all that we have reached 150 countries we have reached 
at the peak time a number of 4 millions and we have affected many more many many more so is a is a question of understanding that we are learning while doing and we are doing while learning we are developing the whole thing silo started developing the whole idea while working with people and this started growing while he was banned in argentina we went to other countries and by the time the ban was over we were in 42 countries so the growth in the beginning looks small but a time can come when it will burst into a big one and that is what we are working at and that is what we hope and we believe would happen it all depends on how many people try to understand us and try to join us here actually uh, i don't know i can uh, i can add to some points but i can uh, i will speak in malayalam if you if you don't mind no i don't mind no no because uh, many people are uh, only only speaking i mean they can understand malayalam or uh, actually uh, i will i will try go ahead go ahead uh, go ahead there no problem yeah yeah no actually we are talking about the or or samskarathinte maatam thaniyanu or direction is humanity ude direction de or maatathe pattiyanu nammal samsarikkunnathu allante oru cheriya social work o allengil oru cheriya adhumari ude activity o alla ee eni eni varuna oru oru samoham ippozh nammal jeevikkunnathu pre human history ilan അത് ശരിക്കും ഒരു ഹ്യൂമൺ ഹിസ്റ്ററിയിലേക്കുള്ള ഡയറക്ഷനിലേക്ക് മാറ്റാനുള്ള ഒരു ശ്രമമാണ് നമ്മൾ നടത്തുന്നത് ആ ശ്രമത്തിന്റെ ഭാഗമായിട്ട് അത് വളരെ ഡിഫിക്കൽട്ടാണ് ഇപ്പൊ നിങ്ങളുടെ കൺസേൺ എല്ലാം വളരെ വളരെ ക്ലിയർ ആണ് നമുക്കറിയാം വളരെ കുറച്ച് ആൾക്കാർ കൊണ്ട് ഇതൊന്നും സാധിക്കില്ല പക്ഷെ സംബഡി സംവേർ ഇറ്റ് ഹേസ് ടു ബിഗിൻ ആൻഡ് വി ആർ ഡൂയിങ് ദാറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ഇഫ് ദർ ഈസ് എ ബെറ്റർ ചോയ്സ് ഇൻ ദ വേൾഡ് വി ക്യാൻ ഓൾസോ വർക്ക് വിത്ത് ദം ആൻഡ് വി ക്യാൻ ഓൾസോ ജോയിൻ വിത്ത് ദം but now presently we see there is no other option in front of us so we are doing it in our own way that is actually you think of uh, uh, you think of uh, uh, this rajavarnathinu engana democratic ilekku maari aa aa oru maatra sambhavikkumbodhu oru direction humanity oru direction thanne maaruvanu appo nammal aa direction we are going to a new direction which is the human uh, 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 our direction like we are going to come and we are going to do that is a new samskara in the future that is a new samskara in the future we are going to do it is not a, a, a task sometimes, uh, sometimes mostly and 100% we will not see that uh, that word but we are working for that this is what i want to say thank you then those who are not speaking could kindly switch off their uh, audio mute their audio so that they won't be disturbed uh, mr sudhir i am still concerned about uh this slow transition if we want to influence all individuals and bring about change i think it's going to take a long time and people cannot and 90% of the general population are not interested and uh, they will not understand also this is I why again we, repeating this is why we need more and more people to be with us reaching out in turn to many more people and if you have a, a better way of doing it please tell us and we will we will follow it if there is a better way of doing it we will learn and follow it that's uh, given it, are you it is not a better way of uh, doing or anything kerala? like that it is a mansur a, mansur are you participating in our activities in kerala no not at not yet not so at. please come to please come to a meeting and an activity and you will have a different feeling about it 
the, sure. as they say the 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 proof of the pudding is in eating it Lakshmanan, you want to say something? That you missed in the beginning? What happened to people from Peru, from abroad? Everyone silent? Well, I mean, it depends on who wants to ask a question or wants to raise a point. And who does not? <clears throat> Just to listen a uh, foreign voice from the road, that's all. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, let's do like this. Let me let me try and give you a a very small practical exercise example of what we do with ourselves. Uh, I'm sharing one uh, screen. Now, this is a brief exercise. Listen to me very carefully first, and then we will do it. In this exercise, you will keep your hand on your heart like this, like Silo has kept. You can keep one hand or you can keep both the hands. I will guide you. And you will breathe deeply from your mouth, not from your nose, but from your mouth and taking the air inside and feeling the air going to your heart where you are pressing your heart with the head, with your eyes closed. And while you're doing that, I will repeat some sentences where you will ask for certain things like, like we do in a prayer or we do in a wish for somebody. This will take less than two minutes. So I invite you to do this exercise. And this is from the spiritual response, one of the six responses that Silo has developed, which is also called Silo's message, uh, which is the co-organizer of today's event. So let's do this. Please sit comfortably. And you can switch off your mic. Close your eyes. Keep one hand or both the hands on your heart. Breathe deeply from your mouth, taking the gulp of air into your heart. Then Ask with strength for yourself and your dearest loved ones. Ask with strength to move away from everything that brings you contradiction. Ask for your life to have unity. Do not spend a great deal of time on this brief prayer, this brief asking. Because if you interrupt for just an instant what is happening in your life, it will be enough. It will be enough for your feelings and your ideas to become clarified by that contact with your interior. When you have finished, you can gently open your eyes. Thank you. 
this is a very very brief a very simple basic exercise but is very powerful i will suggest you an experiment do this one to two minutes twice a day for a week and see if you are able to knock into that interior that deep within you and perhaps discover something you could be in for a big for a very happy surprise so like this we try to connect with the depths within us we try to learn the meaning of our life we try to learn the purpose of our life and then we learn here in the movement how to be guided by that purpose how to move towards that purpose and various questions become start becoming clear to us the path becomes clear to us and then the life changes to a new direction and obviously when the life changes to a new direction we move the whole world of ours me my family my friends my neighborhood the people i interact with in that direction this is how we try to cause the personal and social transformation well friends uh, i am done unless you have any other questions it would be nice to have everybody with the camera on perhaps for a picture Uh, thank you. Mazhar bhai. Thank you, sir. You are a handsome guy. Without you, the picture would be incomplete. Nidha, Aziz bhai. Come in. <laughs> Luang, Maria Teresa, Azina. <laughs> well we will miss some who have left but then sir, the video is always there, there. Sir, there are a lot of friends from outside india so we couldn't understand who are they and uh, it was well, just after the photograph you can ask them for an introduction and i suppose many people will like to introduce themselves more uh, luwang can we have your uh, camera on maria teresa Azina okay let's take a picture with those who are here thank you Well, friends, if there is uh, if there is no other question or no other, uh, I points, wish to add. I wish to add a few words. Please. So I am Moidu, a teacher from Kerala High School. So when I heard about the Sido and when I joined the group, uh, I can say that. i have got a lot of new ideas and principles to change myself that is my personal experience so uh, yesterday itself i i read the uh, book self liberation so while we are going through the messages we are getting the ideas to change ourselves and to change the surroundings that is my personal experience and uh, uh, when i when i am sharing this uh, principles and things to the friends they are very interested to hear and moreover uh, they are uh, reading uh, from uh, the miss books and other things they are trying to read that and uh, i am i am sure that whenever this this principles are widely easily understand and when we accept 
You, you just described how the personal and social transformation happens. Thank you. Thank you, Boydu. Yes, please. Uh, everyone uh, say their name and uh, place in a few words. Okay. Okay. Lakshmanan is requesting that we all introduce ourselves with our name and the place where we come from. Good idea. Okay. I am Abdul Aziz from Calicut, Kerala. Thank you very much for this wonderful session. Okay. I am Lakshman uh, Kannur, Kerala. And presently, I am a member of the Convergence of Culture. Okay, thank you. I am Abu from Kerala, uh, from God's own country in the world. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, Kerala is known for that. <laughs> Okay, everyone, please. I am Moidu from Kerala, near to Mr. Abu. We are very near, we are living in near space. Great. Mary, you wanted to say. Yes, I don't speak English very well, but. <laughs> it's very bad, but I only want to say that uh, I'm very happy and uh, um, I want to say thank you. That's all. <laughs> you are from Peru. Okay. I am Manju. Yes, yes, I am from Peru. Ji yeah, Manju. Man. Uh, I am Manju Jha from Bihar, India. From Parks of Study and Reflection, Narhi. Hello, everyone. My name is Koro. Yes. We can't hear you. Yeah, you can. No, the voice is uh, uh, in in trouble. Oh, okay. 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 Are you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm from uh, Imphal, Manipur. Uh, my name is Brajendra Elias Koro. Uh, my nickname is Koro Hanbalwang. Uh, I'm from uh, Impal Manipur. Uh, I'm very happy to uh, join this program. And uh, this message, Shilo's message, which is uh, given by our uh, brother, uh, <clears throat> you are very great to share that uh, information regarding the uh, Shilo's message. Uh, it is very uh, fruitful to us. Uh, only this thing, I want to convey my uh, message for this new year. <laughs> Thank you Thank all. You. Yeah. Thank you. Lali, would you like to introduce yourself? Lali from Mendoza. <laughs> Mute, Lali, mute. You are muted. La verdad que solo hablo español. Ha sido un agrado estar con ustedes. Eh, maravilloso solo escucharlos, percibirlos, sentirlos, que estamos en lo mismo, a tanta distancia, pero tan cerca. Eh, en el corazón 
en realidad ha sido maravilloso verlo. Estamos en lo mismo. Así que, bien, eh, a unar fuerza, a unirnos y, y dar, digamos, a la salida a un cambio, a una etapa de humanizar, humanizar la tierra y llegar a ese futuro y acercarlo, ojalá, de, de la universalidad del humanismo, una comunidad humanista mundial. Somos todos iguales, diferentes culturas, pero seres humanos. Así que un abrazo para todos ustedes, de corazón a corazón. Gracias. Dino, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, comparto la palabra de Lali. Um, my, uh, excuse me, I speak a little English. I hope um, uh, wish uh, the best wishes for all in peace, force, and joy. Uh, in from the, the Canary Island, in from of Africa, Sahara, in Sahara Occidental, in territory of the, in Spain. I participate in a Centro Humanista de las Culturas de la Federación Convergence of Cultures. Thank you, Tino. Thank you very much. Ambli Harris. Ambli Harris, can you introduce yourself? Yes, I'm Ambli Harris from Palakkad, Kerala. And thank you so much for this uh, August group of humanists. <coughs> thank you. Thank you. Nida, Nida, please. <clears throat> Hello, Nida. Please introduce. Maybe she's not there. Yeah. Okay. Okay, friends. Okay, I, I, with this, we can uh, we come to a uh, close for the meeting. Uh, we thank you very much for uh, listening patiently to a long, uh, what could be a boring. Uh, talk uh, since it could come from a big name but we thank you very much for being with us for hearing and for a few comments that you gave us and we look forward to more activities together and to more such talks by more people together taking the subject to more people thank you very much now so there i request uh, at least uh, once in month we want to conduct uh, such a uh, clarification yeah. meeting, clarification uh, talk, discussion. Sure, sure. Yeah, sure. once in a month. Let's do it. It's no once in a month. Okay. So, yeah, okay. because you uh, yeah, yeah. help us have yeah. a meeting frequently. Sure. Sure. As we always wish to everyone, peace, okay. force, and joy. Force and joy. Okay, everyone, peace, Paz, force, fuerza, and joy. Paz, fuerza, y alegría para todos. Paz, fuerza, y alegría. 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 Paz, fuerza, y aleg